Good morning. Welcome to St Swithin's Daily Devotions. My name's Anne Powell and it's my pleasure to look at today's reading with you. We're studying St John's Gospel through this guidebook, the word one-to-one. -one. And today we've come to the first part of the passage that's very familiar to many people, the Good Shepherd. Well, not all of it may be familiar, so let's see. Before I read, let's pray. God our Father, open our ears to your word, our eyes to see your truth, and our hearts to believe. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm reading John 10 verses 1 to 13 from the New International Version and the one-to-one -one booklet. The Shepherd and His Flock Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate of the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, and whoever comes through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and can, cares nothing for the sheep. I was born in the middle of industrial England in Birmingham. Although there were parks, and green open spaces, there weren't many fields around and certainly no sheep. But we would often travel by train through the countryside and when we saw new lambs in the fields, we knew that spring had arrived. Little white woolly creatures playing around their mothers. If one of them strayed too far, the ewe would bleat and called them back. She knew her own lamb just as surely as it knew her. And those are the sort of lambs that we see in pictures of the Good Shepherd. In paintings and stained glass windows, we see the image that the prophet Isaiah had written many years before. He wrote, God tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He leads gently who those who are with young. The imagery of the sheep and the shepherd runs through the whole Bible and particularly the Old Testament. A society whose wealth was measured by its livestock readily understood that a good shepherd looks after his flock, while a bad shepherd lays it open to sheep stealers and wild animals. Now yesterday, Nigel talked about a passage from the prophet Ezekiel in which God tells the people of Israel that he will be their shepherd rather than leave them to the mercies of bad and corrupt rulers. I myself will lead them, says God. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. It's another mark of his identity as God's son. 
But back to today's passage in John chapter 10, which opens with a slightly less familiar image. I am the gate, the way into the security of the sheepfold, into the place of safety. It is possible that the shepherd may have lain down at the entrance to the enclosure and literally have become the gate. Whether that's true or not, there's no doubt that the sheep entered or left at the shepherd's bidding. My son-in-law's sister in, is a shepherd in the UK. She looks after a small flock of rare breeds. They're lean and goat-like, much more like the sheep that Jesus is talking about. She checks fences, builds a shelter for the lambing season, assists at births, checks their health. She knows her sheep. She's 70 now, but still enormously strong and has a great stillness about her. An animal would feel confident in her care. Strength and calm are attributes needed in caring for animals. I'm reminded of King David, who as the youngest member of the family was a shepherd boy. Listen to his own words before he killed the giant Goliath. Your servant, that is David, has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. Well, that's the sort of situation that Jesus is talking about when he describes the function of the gate. The wild beasts and the sheep stealers who climb the wall and the hired hands don't have the welfare of the sheep at heart. The lion and the bear are searching for food, the sheep stealer for easy money, and the hired hand only wants to save his skin. And who are these marauders? Well, remember that Jesus was talking in Jerusalem and that the Pharisees and teachers of the law were part of the crowd of listeners. With their knowledge of the Old Testament prophets like Ezekiel, they should have been in no doubt that the figure of speech is directed at them. The implication that they are corrupt, uncaring, looking out for their own well-being is only thinly veiled. The Good Shepherd knows his sheep, not just as a flock, but individually, by name. Our names are important to us, aren't they? Our identity is closely bound up with our name. In a passage from the prophet Isaiah, God says, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. To be called by name tells us that we matter, that we're not just a number, a statistic. We have an identity. The sheep are called into the pen by name and called out of the pen by name. There is mutual recognition and security. And it's worth dwelling for a moment on the importance of that. What does it mean to you to be called by name? to recognise the voice of the person who loves and knows you through and through. Only Jesus knows everything about us. The sheep in the pen may have been from different flocks, but only those called by name recognise his voice. They only recognise the voice of the shepherd and follow him. Just like the man who was healed from blindness. Jesus calls each of us by name to follow him today. The Good Shepherd, who is also the gate, who lays down his life for his sheep. Have you heard his call and followed him? Let's pray. God, our Shepherd, we thank you that you know each of us by name. Jesus, our gateway, Help us to follow where you lead, knowing that you have our welfare at heart. Holy Spirit, our guide, keep us steadfast in our life journey. Amen. 
gracious God, as we live in this world of uncertainty, help us to be confident in your unfailing love. We thank you for the wisdom of our government in their handling of the coronavirus, and we pray that the people will obey the rules laid down as restrictions ease. Our hearts ache for those who have lost loved ones all over the world, and for those who are sick. We pray for doctors and nurses and carers who continue to be in a vulnerable position. Please give wisdom to the scientists who are seeking for a vaccine. Loving shepherd of your sheep, enfold us in the safety of your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and with all those we love, now and evermore. Amen.